Okay, I've put some black on this now. I'll zoom in on this so that you can and get an idea of how it's beginning to change the looks of the rock. You see I put quite a bit of black on. We move way in. And you see those speckles of different color. Okay, now of course we've got to probably turn the rock and get along the bottom edges a little bit, but uh, you want, the only thing I can tell you too is to just make sure that you wait and let uh, let each color dry before you put on another one so that they don't uh, start to run and blend together uh, unless that's the look that you're you're looking for. This gives very discreet little speckles and we only have two colors on there. We have a little bit of that that uh, buff color and we have uh, just the black speckles. And as you continue to add colors it becomes more and more realistic. And generally you wait and uh, do the blacks and the whites toward the end. So there's your Here's your rock speckles. Let me put some more on while you're watching. And shake out most of the most of the paint, and then start by being gentle with your taps. And I take a little practice to kind of get to know about where the speckles are going to end up. And this is a better idea. And that's all you do to see there's a considerable bit of difference between the way this one looks, it's got a little bit of black on it, and the way this one looks. Yeah, I moved a little rock so that I could get to the other parts of this. I'm adding some white. I can't emphasize enough that you can't be in a hurry. Take your time. Take your time. Be very gentle with those first spatterings. Otherwise you'll end up with big blobs of, of paint. And then as the paint begins to run out on the brush, you hit a little harder. Uh, Sun, as you can see from the sunshine hitting the rocks, it's an absolutely gorgeous day, and uh, he wants to go play golf. So I guess I'll just finish this off just a little bit here, and then I'll say uh, I'll see you later. It's October the fourth, and we're not going to have too many more days like this. So I think uh, I'm going to give this a break, go wash up, change my clothes, go out and play golf. And I'll zoom in on this so you can at least see what it looks like now with some white on it. I hope you can see that it's now taking on the look of speckled real rock. Uh, and we've only added the buff, the black, and the white. If we had two or three, perhaps four different colors of browns added to this, a couple different tints of green, maybe a few speckles of very light yellow, maybe some blue, uh, leaving the predominant colors as browns, the blacks and the whites, I think you'll see that you end up with a pretty nice looking rock. I'm not going to spend any more time with this one. We're going to let this dry anyway. And then uh, when I get back from playing golf, if it's still light out, I'll show you about seal on the rock. Uh, well, I might want to add one note that don't worry too much about whether you put too much of one color on or another because you can always go back and and uh, 
cover it up with more speckles. Get too much white on, go back and put some more browns on, put some more blacks on uh, until you get it to, to look in the way you want. It takes a little practice. Uh, the important thing is to be patient and uh, enjoy it. Take your time. And pretty soon you have some good looking rocks. That doesn't look too bad even right now. I'll show you how to seal it next time. October 5th now. My son and I played golf yesterday. Beautiful day. Today was a rainy, nasty day all day. It's got to be rather late in the day. It's about quarter to four in the afternoon and the sun's finally come out so we can kind of finish up this video. Uh, here's that rock that we were speckling yesterday and uh, I would continue to put different colors on this to really get uh, a more natural look to it but uh, for the purposes of this video you get the idea that's how the painting is done and that's how the coloring is done on it. The next thing would be to seal this and uh, what I use is uh, uh, it depends upon where I'm going to use the rock. If I'm going to use this outside uh, where it's going to be exposed to a, a lot of water I'm going to use a solvent based uh, water sealant the one that I use to use is xylene as a base, and it, it waterproofs the, bucket of the xylene based uh, sealer that I use on rocks, especially rocks that are going to be exposed to extreme weather, or the rocks that are going to be used uh, in the pond itself. If rocks are going to be underwater, they're going to have to be really waterproof. Or if you're doing a pond out of this kind of material, uh, this kind of stone material, as I did with my pond, you're also going to have to seal the rocks and the, uh, the lining of the pond, and this would be the final coat on those kinds of rocks. Uh, the other thing that you need to, to know is when you're sealing rocks for the purposes of, uh, of using them actually in water or sealing the walls of the pond, one thing you should do before finishing is to coat the rocks with a, with a, a waterproof coating. That waterproof coating can be made by simply taking again your, your masonry cement and mixing just the cement with uh, acrylic polymer, uh, the 3 to 1 acrylic polymer, uh, until it's, uh, it, it's in the consistency of a paint and then painting it on. That's essentially the, uh, the formula that's used in the cementitious waterproofing agents that you get for inside of uh, of basement walls and what have you. And if you paint that on in, in two or three layers, uh, the lining of the pond or over the rocks that are going to be underwater, it gives a very good waterproof coating. Then you would do your coloring and then you would seal it with the uh, with the final xylene based sealer. And uh, if not, if your rocks are just going to be outside, uh, not in uh, underwater conditions or in standing water, then you can use any other water-based kind of, uh, of uh, sealant, such as uh, such as Thompson's water seal.